talking to us and uh, you know what better place to be right in the middle of the work mm-hmm. you know there aren't very many um, instances where i can recall that i was inside the work to experience it you know so that's the way this has been set up is uh, is really giving giving me that immersive feeling in in ways more than one um but just taking a step back uh, when is the first time that you got introduced to jayshri chakravarti's work actually Oh, that's a long time back, Rahul, and I remember that I saw her work at Gallery Espace. I did see her wo- work also at the Lalit Kala um, in a group show. And I was familiar with some of the images of her works, but I came to know her more uh, closely uh, when I got a chance to curate an exhibition, which was to happen in Nice. but since then i'm actually be, i've been in conversation with her is what mm. i can say mm. um it was uh, very interesting i was looking at her paintings earlier and i found them very intriguing very elusive i loved the way she treated the surface of the painting and she had this kind of a really free spiritedness in terms of uh, approaching her work and there is something um, extremely wild and messy and chaotic mm. that came through in those works which i uh, responded to because one i felt that uh, um it was gestural it was immediate it was raw it had it was full of energy something that i really responded to but i was much more drawn to her practice when she made this shift you know when she really felt that the easel painting was in some way um limiting for her mm, containing you know and containing mm. her and she really wanted to spill out more mm. and uh, these borders and boundaries mm. uh, somehow restricted her mm. flow mm. so but she had no way to go in the sense what would she do she can either go and make bigger canvases right. or larger canvases right. but that was not what she was looking for mm. and i think this shift towards uh making her own scrolls you know and that too going back to paper no right, right became very exciting you know in terms of uh, what she was doing she could not find paper of that size she wanted ma- paper that could actually um, you know um, start from the floor and touch the ceiling mm. and actually take that space that entire space engulf like we have been engulf- okay. engulfed in the space and uh, she started working with she was st- uh, struggling i suppose this challenge was there she was uh, gathering composites of paper uh, pieces of fabric and trying to put them together mm. almost like stitching them but mm. not stitching them mm. superimposing gluing them you know and mm. making making these scrolls so um jeshi makes these papers herself. yes she makes this herself and uh, so they are handmade in that sense uh first when i uh, spoke to her about them she was telling me and let me just start with this work because this is now a, a work which takes us back 18 years in mm. time mm. you mm. know and she had done some scrolls earlier in lalit kala i had seen scrolls which were uh, again from the ceiling uh, from the floor till the ceiling maybe 16 feet maybe 17 feet mm. but they were leaner scrolls mm. and they uh, what i found very interesting was the process the process was we have grown up knowing that paper is delicate paper is fragile right and here i was seeing paper so resilient mm. so firm like it could stand on its own pretty much yeah, yeah. pretty and much like, and yeah. she could actually turn it twirl it a bit mm. and give it you know uh, she form. could actually give it a form she could shift the form as if she's working with metal sheet absolutely and she would shift yeah. she could shift the form mm. she could allow she could create those spaces which one could navigate in between these uh, scrolls you know this reminds me of uh, richard serra's uh, sort of spaces that he mm. created of course using metal and much larger scale a very minimalist kind of an intervention and a uh, human interaction uh, you know with the scale and that form uh, and and the mm. negative spaces all of that was important there all of that seems to be coming back here mm. but uh, what is extremely um uh, contrary to that minimal approach <laughs> is the maximalist approach on the surface here yeah. 
right? So how does how does this come together? No, no. I find I find uh, you're bringing Sarah very interesting because for me this is all that Sarah is not in one sense. Hmm. This is irregular. This is uneven. Okay, mm. this is mm. not symmetrical. Right. You know, this mm. has its uh, strange corners and t turns. You know, it's mm. so so much about the artist's hand. Mm. Okay, mm. at work, and also in terms of how she is uh, creating a very sinuous kind of a form, mm. uh, using something you know which is also uh, being made with her own hands. You know, the scroll. She told me when she's, this is one of the largest, biggest work she has done, which is 60 feet, mm. okay. Mm. And the sister work is right now being shown at the Asian Art Museum in San Francisco. Wow. Right now as we are Yes, mm. it's, it's installed there. First, these were only two works that she did of this size and scale. Mm. And, I, and I feel what she, was, uh, what she was trying to do here was, you know, she has been very inspired and drawn to uh, nature forms, which mm. are which are which have an, an interior, or let let's say, which are something like a cocoon, containing a containing form, mm. a sheltering form, you know, an engulfing form, mm. you know, somewhere where you feel comforted, somewhere mm. where you can sit in solitude, mm. you know, be in your own space, kind of thing. She wanted to create an interior space, but she also wanted that it be experienced in and out. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. You actually experience the interior. You sit, but you go out because it is painted both sides. Right. You, have to you know. Yes. There. So right. it continues. And I was asking her, how did you do this? And she says, listen, I didn't have a studio which had 60 feet of space. Mm -hmm. So I was literally making this paper scroll and rolling it every day. And then unrolling and it. And unrolling it every day and working on, on it and then rolling it. Okay. And I find that in and, and it's also it's uh, it, it's uh, very very it, it has a height as well. Right. It's not just sixty feet. It's right. also very very. Uh, it has its uh, height. It has a scale of a different kind. When you have to put it on the floor and work, mm. it's I don't know how because it's uh, one thing is that like viewers we don't have any one vantage point to look at it exactly it invites us to actually move and walk with uh, walk mm. with it mm. so it 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 has a mobile vision in Correct. that sense Correct. it has multiple perspectives and multiple focal points coming in yes. so it has a very topsy turvy uh, kind of a very chaotic um, landscape and yet ordered in some way because so, you can actually be spending time here mm. And when I think about even the treatment of the paper, which I'm very intrigued by, every time I see her scroll, I first touch it mm -hmm. because it sometimes feels like she has been able to turn paper. She's testing the limits of paper, okay. mm -hmm. what it can do, how to optimize it, how to maximize it, as you said. And it stands like leather or it stands really like a structural element, no, absolutely. you know. That's, so that's it, So when I told her why you wanted to do this, she said, you know what? I always wanted to paint like on a continuous surface like a wall. Mm. So many times uh, looking at architecture of different kinds, mm. looking at walls that never end, mm. you know, and graffiti goes on or something goes on, it just invites you mm. and to have a wall of your own to be permanently being able to see it can be a very exciting thing, you know. Correct. And that's that, exactly what yeah, she's created. Created, it. yes. But uh, I have, uh, you know, one, uh, one question here. It seems extremely spontaneous at mm -hmm. one level, mm -hmm. but at another level, exactly what you said, there are uh, focal points. There are there is text, yeah. there is detailing, yes. uh, and and there are recognizable sort of forms mm -hmm. that come and they throw a hint at you. So it's clearly not. Uh, and again, again, I'm drawing a parallel with a mm -hmm. with a Western abstractionist like Jackson Pollock, for mm -hmm. example, right? So there is no starting, there is no end. Mm -hmm. Right, it's just it just flows, and yeah. uh, as a viewer, you can enter at any place, right, and make make that your journey. Yeah, right? that's true. Uh, mm -hmm. But tell me about the whole uh, process of her working. I mean, was it spontaneous, mm -hmm. which it seems? But then, like I said, it's also layered with a lot of thought through uh, <laughs> intervention. If Jayashree was here, she would say, "I the only thing I don't know is where to stop." <laughs> okay, yeah. I know I can keep on 
doing things i can yeah. keep on it's like drawing redrawing erasing redrawing you know mm -hmm. it would just go on it's an it's a process she so enjoys because mm -hmm. it's so immersive and i think uh, uh, i had a very interesting conversation once where we were talking about i have seen that she never has a premeditated plan mm -hmm. she never never draws her on her canvas she mm -hmm. just starts and it is a play between instinct and intuition you know there is instinctive uh, play but there is also a, a, a stop a pause then returning back and intuitively there are as you said points where she knows that she might have some structure here some mm. ruin there you in know some letters in, in, in some letters flo yeah. floating here here some maps being charted yeah, yeah, you know yeah. some territories being laid out some terrains being opened up you know all that is uh, uh, coming out you know spilling out it's almost as if there is this accumulated sense of experiences mm. and those accumulated experiences then take then just tumble out you know but in that inchoate moments and I, I mean the mess that mm. is there mm. there is still order there is still aesthetics of some kind mm. there is something that keeps drawing or pulling our attention here and there mm. and there there is a way to read this you know there is a way you can enter certain uh, you know uh, areas certain mm. zones certain mm. places especially in this work and I'm glad you brought it up this work has a lot of text mm. I don't think she's ever used text like she has used in this work mm. and this was a phase she says in her life mm. when she was very drawn to phrenology because her father was a doctor mm. and the f his, her father she was very close to her father her father used to be seeing these uh, you know um, uh, x-rays scans and MRIs and all kinds of things mm. reading those interior sort of maps and uh, mm. you know right. and uh, there would be remarks there and she was very much drawn to those remarks. So what a it fascinating parallel. Uh, specifically talking about the surface and the imagery itself. Mm. You know, a, at one level, uh, y y you know, you can't avoid thinking animal skin, which is stretched kind mm. of a feel to it. Mm. Uh, there is, uh, you know, there is a use of a lot of line, which is primarily black and at, at places it is white. Um, you can tell it is, you know, sourced from nature in some way. It also feels that it is aged. Mm -hmm. It is, it is, it is mm -hmm. layering through age, and there is lots of layers, right? So, what are the, uh, you know, uh, interpretation of the image itself, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from from her perspective? What is she trying to do with that? You know, what I have understood is that her primary uh, preoccupation has always been habitat. You know, how do you look at the face of the earth? How is it occupied? What is occupying it? There is nature, there is land, there is earth, there are earth forms. Okay. And then gradually the disappearance of nature, mm. which also comes into our work very strongly, sure. isn't it? What happened to Salt Lake? Right. It, how did it turn into a concrete city? Correct. Okay. How did uh, what this kind of an urban congestion means? You know, it takes away different forms of life. The forest fires. You know, the for yes, it goes away. Yeah. Aquatic forms of life died. Yeah. You know, yeah. there is loss, mm. and this loss talks about ecological balance and ecological duress in some way. Mm. It may not directly reflect, but there are so many concerns about what happens to habitat in this whole notion of history and progress we have destroyed quite a few things on the earth Absolutely. and one of the things is this whole uh, you know the the uh, what her i think plea is that she wants that uh, you know all forms of life could harmoniously coexist those insignificant creatures who we think are not important but True. they also have their role to play in the ecology no, of uh, yeah. you know so there are these things and i think so if we really want to actually cut down and you know dissect we are not going to be able to dissect the mm. work in that sense mm. because the imagery is of this kind of holism you know mm. of life you know it is about this wholeness okay and there are layers and layers coming up in and out you know right. she's going in and out of layers mm. somewhere but that's a very fascinating structure she's uh, recollecting some kind of a uh, monument or a church or uh, mm. some building mm. and it comes I've seen it appear in many of her works mm. Mm. so there are things that come uh, 
and in this work particularly i was even able to see if you concentrate more mm. you are even able to see humans you see some faces as mm -hmm. if they are witnessing what is happening and changing True. in front of them. Right, this right. whole transformation mm -hmm. that is happening, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the changing world, the more every moment things are changing. Things are changing. And you know, know, there's a very interesting uh, thumbprint. Thumbprints kind of are there. There you are know. some other kinds of prints as well. Yeah. So it's more actually. I think it's more loaded within, uh, inside with all these images. Mm -hmm. Outside, when you walk, you see a lot of dribbles. You see a lot of free, uh, free, uh, free flowing maze and labyrinth kind of uh, you know mm. drawings mm. you see a figure or a face that is standing as witness uh, it's very different on the other side mm. but I feel in this work and I especially want to stress on this because I have been writing on a work for now um, two decades uh, what I feel is this is not a translucent scroll Mm, it is yes. this is a opaque scroll and yes. at that time mm. 20 years ago she was doing scrolls which were not translucent which were not the kind where she was actually sandwiching between these uh, pieces uh, of paper pieces yeah she was not putting pieces. organic materials right. she yeah. was not using that as mm. yet mm. so everything that you see is outside spilled out in the imagery okay which later mm. then you know gets into um, takes on another form right. so because these are opaque you know the, the treatment is very interesting I tell her when I look at this work I feel like all kinds of building material mm -hmm. the, these are all colors of building material Correct. whether it is stone whether it is cement whether it is uh, you know lime whether gypsum yes. whether soot whether uh, chalk whatever yeah. it's ev the building material is uh, these are the colors of building material therefore it, they do feel you know, you feel the solidity of this mm, actually, structure. Yeah, you feel yeah. as if you are seeing a rock wall. form, uh, a yeah, wall form. Yeah, yeah. You are actually seeing a sculptural form and not just something that has been painted or created out of paint. And I think that is something extraordinary in Jayashree. That kind of cave feel. It is a cave feel and she is very drawn to cave also. Okay, so the when you talk about impressions, you talk about imprints left behind, yes, yes. you talk about age, you talk about time, you know, all these are concerns. I think time is very much a factor in this work, you know. It is about time, mm -hmm. it is about change, it is about transformation, it is also where we are headed to. Mm -hmm. You know, there is chaos, there is uh, anxiety, there is this, uh, you know, uh, there is lack of space. We are also, you know, we are just taking over every part of the earth. You know, as, as uh, yeah. selfish as yeah, we are taking over. Mm -hmm. You know, and that that will that is what perhaps is one of the things that she is addressing. And I I tell her that you I don't see any restive space here. Mm -hmm. And she tells me, though this may not be restive, you will rest when you come here inside. Actually, and that's 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 I like a, a very dichotomous here. Yeah, but it is very true right. because if you see only the imagery, it. It is uh, making you a little restless. Yeah. But uh, when you're in the work and you're just absorbing the whole Absolutely. space, it is actually very calm. Calm. You know, so that is again. Uh, there are so many dichotomies here that are at play in my mind. And yeah, and she adds to that, and she says, "I find it meditative. I don't know about you, but I find it because once I sit down, then I know that it's like uh, when people say, you know, that uh, distraction is the only way to gather your or uh, center, yeah, your, center thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts right, you know yeah. you come from that kind of a chaos, chaos like, mm. and you start centering yourself or ordering yourself you know you just want to bring order back yeah. you know there is this kind of a, mm. this uh, this whole fascination with drawing you know this whole networking and webbing I mean linear networking you know the way she dribble creates her lines you know it just it just flows, it connects. It, flows. it connects. It's not yeah. that this is one panel versus no. the other. It's not that kind there of There is no way, panel. no. And there you is. you cannot separate a part of it anyway. Exactly. You just cannot. Yes, I yes. also told, um, I think I was um, uh, talking to Jayashree only and telling her that yours is also practice of endurance. Mm. Because this kind of work single handedly and being able to start from scratch. Okay, you yes. don't know how long, what length, okay. how, man, how many months, how many years. But that is something that she also perhaps demands from the viewer. Mm. Okay, because the viewer 
yeah. who, who, who will come here will have to be drawn into it. Mm. I mean, she's caring for those viewers who come, but then they will have to invest time mm. because there is so much here. Yeah. You know, you yeah. walk in, you walk out, you walk in again. And then you go back and to then, an image. And there is a play again on Step proximity back. and yes. distance. Yes. So yes. you go for, to a, you see it from a distance, but you're also invited to see close up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you will go closer to it also. Mm. And there's this movement, you know, mm. and this repose mm. is so important to really take in this work. Absolutely. And I love it when the artist's intent is very clear of demanding that from its viewers. Yeah. So if you really want to come see my work, you know, that come with that approach and really? attitude. Otherwise, yeah, because otherwise it's sense. just going, otherwise it's... Yeah, you mean it's sort of one sweeping view, view. and it's yeah. over, right? I yeah. Mean, that's not what it is. That's it's extremely fascinating work. Yeah. Well, and thank you so much for putting yeah. context and, and sharing, uh, you know, your experience interacting with Jayashree uh, over so many years. It, it really, you know, makes consumption of this work uh, that much more enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks.